Hi friends, welcome to Calm in the Chaos Homeschool. My name is Devin and today I'm going to be doing a flip through of Book Sharks level D plus E condensed intro to American history. started with Sunlight B and C two years ago when we started homeschooling and we are now just finishing that first condensed level and now we're moving into D and E and I'm a little concerned that we take a really long time to get through our curriculums so that's part of the reason why I chose to do D and E. Also my oldest daughter is 13 and so it is on the younger side for her. However, it is not too challenging for her, but I just want to get to other levels as well. So that's kind of why we've chose to do the condensed version. So it's not as popular, it's not as well known as the separate D and E levels, but it works for us. Also, we supplement a lot. So I'm actually going to be making a three-part series, and this is the first video in that three-part series. This video is going to be a flip through of Bookshark D and E condensed. The next one's going to be a flip through of Beautiful Feet, Primary Early American History. And the third video is going to be about how I am combining those together to create my own history curriculum. So part of the reason why we take so long to get through our curriculum is that I like to mix and match and mush things together and go just have different styles of learning and just have different types of books. And so that is kind of why I went with the condensed version. I know how long it's going to take us to get through it. That being said, I am hoping to get through this in the upcoming school year, but I guess we'll see how that goes. So let's get into my flip through of Bookshark level D and E. So first of all, here is my huge Bookshark binder, very well known in Bookshark, big massive binder. And I have all my teacher guides and maps and things in here. And I'm actually going to flip my camera around and show you inside of this in a little bit. But I'm first gonna go through all the books that come in this level and just give you a look at those before we go in and look at a little bit more of what's in the teacher guide. So I have a pile on my lap here. Let me just show you here. So here's my pile of, these are basically the history curriculum and the books that you're reading for history. So it comes with this, We Sing America. It has a CD, it has a book that has the music in there. I haven't opened it yet, but I know what it is because we have been using one for this last level that we used. So we have American songs and things that we can sing. I'm going to try to refrain from saying how I'll use it in my homeschool since I'm going to be talking about that in the third video. So if you want to hear how I incorporate all these curriculums into my homeschool, stick around for that third part of this series. All right, so we have that in there. We have Pedro's Journey, so kind of a story of Columbus. And we have read this one already, A Boy's Perspective on the Ship. We have North American Indians. This was a really quick read through. It talks about all the different groups and the different tribes, more of the different areas and how they lived and how they were all a little bit different. So that was a really good book. We enjoyed that. Yeah. So a very good introduction to the different regions and how they all got food and hunted and lived in different ways. And then here are the two main, I would say the spines of this curriculum. We have the Landmark History of the American People, Volume 1. So this is from Plymouth to the West. And just to show you kind of what it looks like inside, it has some pictures. I would say it is pretty textbooky in its language. We did start reading this. We read the first chapter and I was unsure if we would actually use this and we are probably not going to use it but I feel okay with that because I am combining it with Beautiful Feet. So like I said, I'm gonna to try to refrain from saying things like that in this video, but that's kind of where we're at there. And this is the second one here. It's actually a thicker book here, The Landmark History of American People, From Charleston to the Moon, Volume Two. Same thing, 
kind of a textbook type, textbook style. So those are kind of the spines. Um, you use that throughout the whole level. We have What's the Big Idea, Ben Franklin. So this probably is just over a few days reading about Benjamin Franklin. Okay, the Constitution of the United States. Also probably something we do just quickly over a few days. Another one, a true book, The Bill of Rights. Similar idea. Okay, and then we have the Lewis and Clark Expedition. So this looks like kind of a little storybook. What that's gonna be like. Not a lot of pictures. We have the story of Harriet Tubman, Freedom Train. Just gonna be reading that. The story of Thomas Elva Edison, inventor. Okay, that's a really fast little won't take long to read that one. We have Landmark Books, The Wright Brothers. Okay, so. Hero Over Here, A Story of World War I. And this is the last one, A Letter to Mrs. Roosevelt. So those are the history readers in DE Condensed. Now I have the read alouds is my next pile here. And the first one is how to eat a poem. And it was actually supposed to be, I think the Oxford's children's book of poems or something, but I guess they were out. So they gave us this one, how to eat a poem. And this is really the quite short little poems. We started it and we just kind of read a few poems every once in a while in our morning basket. And we're already more than halfway through that, but. They're kind of funny little poems. We have started this, The Witch of Blackbird Pond. I have really enjoyed this. I think my kids are really enjoying it. We are actually doing this audiobook inside of our car, and I think that's a great way to do this book. I had heard that this was a little hard or challenging to read, and as an audiobook, it's just a little more exciting and interesting with all the characters. So I decided that we were going to do the audiobook version of that, and I have not regretted that. It's been a great read aloud that we listen to in the car. All right, we have Johnny Tremaine. So we're getting to the part where I have not read any of these books, so I can't really tell you anything about it. Carry on, Mr. Bowditch. Across Five Aprils. Katie Woodlawn. I'm sure I read that as a child. I don't remember it. Okay. Little Britches. Sorry for the glare. Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry, and Miracles on Maple Hill. And I will say that even though that is quite a lot of read-alouds, we do do more than that in a school year. I usually have a few random ones or I have the missionary stories that fit in with something that we're learning. So we do a lot of read-alouds. I'm thinking of making a video of all the read-alouds we've done in the past year or two. So if you're interested in seeing a video like that, do let me know in the comments below if that's something you'd be interested in seeing. Okay, so now moving on to the readers that come with this level. Let me just pull these up here. So here are the readers for D&E Condensed. So we have Home Casto. So I've read a lot of these just because I wanted to know what my kids were reading. So I enjoyed that one. It was interesting. Okay, we have Pocahontas and the Strangers by my favorite historical fiction author for kids right now, Robert Clyvula. Definitely have read that one. We have The Matchlock Gun, Tolliver's Secret, Phoebe the Spy. And I will say these books, they vary in difficulty. So I have a fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh grader. And so like, depending on the book, like this is Om Casto. I won't have my younger two read that. Pocahontas and the Strangers. I will have all my kids read that because my boys are at the level where most of the Clyde Robert Bula books they can handle. So Matchlock Gun was this. So they'll probably read that one. Okay, so Tolliver's Secret, Phoebe the Spy. All right, we have Justin Morgan had a horse. So probably not one my younger two will read. A little harder. Okay. By the Great Horn Spoon. 
the Great Turkey Walk. Turn Homeward, Hannah Lee. Shades of Gray. Old Yeller. Sarah Plain and Tall. So pretty short book. My boys could probably read that one. The Great Wheel. Helen Keller. Thimble Summer. In the Year of the Boar and Jackie Robinson. And the 17th Swap. All right, so now I'm just going to turn the video over and take a look inside the teacher's manual and just give you a look at what that might look like. All right, let's take a look at Book Sharks D and E Condensed Intro to American History. It is for ages nine to 12, and I'm currently using it for ages nine to 13. I don't think that'll be a problem. My 13 year old will be turning 14 in the upcoming school year, but like I said, that is not a problem for us. It comes with these maps. So we have a map of the Eastern United States, the whole of the United States, Europe, and then a world map here. And throughout the guide, you will be instructed to locate things on your map. It also comes with a large wall map that I'm not going to show you because I don't want to pick up the phone right now and move it. So like I said, this came with a different book, How to Eat a Poem instead of the other book. So they have a schedule here for me to, so I know when to use it. So section one, introduction to your instructor's guide. There's kind of, if you want to take a look at what it includes. And quick start, it talks about what is in this course. Schedule and notes, and I don't have anything there, so I'm not sure why. But anyways, here is the first week. And so I'm just gonna show you kind of what a week might look like using the books and what a day looks like here. So the first book that they would have you using for history is Pedro's Journal. So here we go, Pedro's Journal, August 3rd to September 10th. So there's August 3rd to September 10th. So All right, so we're going to finish that there. So that's how much reading you would be doing for your history. We sing America. So for this week, you're going to be singing The Stars and Stripes Forever, and it tells you what page, and you'll be listening to that on your CD. The Witch of Blackbird Pond, Chapter 1. So here's the Witch of Blackbird Pond. So you just read a chapter. There we go. That's a chapter of Witch of Blackbird Pond. How to Eat a Poem is not scheduled that day. And then your child would be reading Om Casto, Chapter 1. All right, so there's Om Casto. So just a chapter. Casto. All right, so that would be what a day looks like for this history with literature. So the next day you would read more in Pedro's journal. You keep singing the song, Witch of Blackbird Pond, chapter two, page one of how to eat a poem. And I did mention we are actually reading this now and we are going through it a lot faster than what it suggests. So just very short poem and chapter two of Om Casto. And so this is Bookshark. They do four day schedules in Bookshark. So you have the four day schedule and you have the fifth day open for any co-ops or just a catch up day or things like that. So that's week one. And now we have the notes. So the first week notes is gonna be more than any other week. We have day one, they tell you what to read. They give you notes, what you can discuss after you've done the reading. More notes, here's the timeline and map activities. You have your timeline, which I did not talk about. So I did not have that in my original flip through, but here is the timeline book. 
And basically it is just a book full of the timelines. We have the cream color for, I don't know if you can tell the coloring, but this cream color for BC and white color for AD. So that's a timeline. And it comes with all these year one American history figures. So here are a bunch of the stickers. So you cut these out and then they are stickers so you can stick them on your timeline. So as you're going through the teacher guide, it will tell you, we're gonna add Columbus discovers the new world. And then here are some places to look up for geography on your maps. And then here's the read alouds. They talk about good literature and things like that, vocabulary. The Witch of Blackbird Pond, your setting, new vocabulary words that you could talk about with your child, things to discuss after you have done that with your child. And then their reader, they have discussion questions so you can ask your, your child questions after they have read the story to make sure they're understanding what they're doing and another timeline and map activity. So then day two, very similar. It's gonna be a little shorter since they've already explained how to do everything. So day two, day three, day four, and that's the end of week one. So week two, Pedro's journal, you're gonna finish that and you're gonna start North American Indians. So you're gonna start reading from this book. And so it looks like you split it up into two days. So you'd read half of this book one day and half of this book the next day for your history. And then we're continuing with The Witch of Blackbird Pond, How to Eat a Poem, and Own Casto. And then once again, you would have all the notes for each day. And week three. So week three, you would start the landmark history of American people, volume one. That's what, this one here. You would read the first day, you would read the prologue. So there we go, prologue, that's one page. Two, three, four pages there. You would be singing a new song, continue with Witch of Blackburn Pond, How to Eat a Poem, and Om Kesto. And then chapter one, pages one to four. So it looks like generally it's gonna be about four pages of reading in here. So chapter one, one, two, three, four. Not a ton of reading. I will say when I did it with my kids, we could not get through quite that much when we were reading this, maybe more three, three pages. But if you want to know how I adapt my curriculum to suit my family, be sure to watch my third video where I talk about how I'm combining these two, Bookshark and Beautiful Feet books. All right, so that's all I can show you here without going into showing you parts of the guide that are not online. I don't wanna go and show you all that, but I have shown you the books and I've shown you the schedule and kind of an example of what a day looks like. So I hope that flip through was helpful for you to let you know if this is something that you might be interested in using in an upcoming school year. Don't forget to stick around if you're interested in seeing My Beautiful Feet, Primary Early American History, and my final video about how I'm planning on meshing these two curriculum together to just have a even broader base of a literature-based education. Thank you for watching today and don't forget to give me a like if you like videos like this and subscribe if you haven't already. And I hope to see you in my next video. Goodbye everyone.